welcome to another edition of Library Life with Chesapeake Public Library. I'm Joseph Daniels, the Exhibitions Coordinator for the Gallery at Coyle, and today we have with us a true titan of the art world, Ken Wright. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's going to be having an exhibition with us from September 9th to October 22nd at uh, Cuffey Outreach and Innovation Library, um, and today we have the privilege of interviewing him. So you have a really storied career in the art world. You number former presidents and dignitaries and celebrities amongst your collectors. Um, but I do have a question. How did you get started in art? You know, that's a very good question. And Joseph, I just want to thank you so much uh, for having me here. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for me. Uh, you know, in my travels uh, all over the country, uh, I started out uh, always been interested in the arts. Uh, my father before me was an artist. And can you believe a man of color back in the 40s and 50s yeah. being successful as an artist? So I would watch him at the drawing board, and he would take me to museums, like the Museum of Fine Arts up in Richmond. Uh, that's where I'm um, from. And uh, it just got to be a part of me. Uh, I didn't take any art courses uh, in school growing up. Uh, my dad was my teacher. Uh, and then I was just talking to a sicko over there, hope I pronounced her name correctly, uh, from Norfolk State she is. And um, I went to Norfolk State many, many years ago when I came here to uh, the Hampton Roads area, and I actually started my career as an artist, graphics and fine arts at Norfolk State. And then the rest is just history. Uh, stayed in this area and uh, have a studio at the Art Center, and it's just... Uh, how I walked into the more abstract form of, of art. Wonderful. Um, and how would you describe your art? What response are you trying to elicit from viewers? I know that we're calling your exhibition Linger a While, and I really love that expression. Can you kind of elaborate yes. on that for us? Yes, Linger a While. And as an abstract painter, of course, in the beginning, my work was more traditional. Uh, landscape, seascape, uh, the boats on the water, rivers, and that kind of thing. And I noticed as I looked around and traveled around the East Coast, exhibiting my work, I didn't see myself. And when I say myself, I'm not talking about myself as a man of color. I'm talking about myself as standing out from other artists. Mm -hmm. So I began to go into the more abstract form of art. And so when I'm doing that, I like for the viewer, as you're looking at my work, you become the creator. And I like to say, when you look at my work, don't take the first impression, but linger a while. Let the, let the work speak to you. And as you do that, now you see the melody. You hear the melody. You feel the emotion of the piece. So when you do that, now you have become a part of the works that you're looking at. So you're not just looking and saying, well, I don't understand it, Ken. What is it supposed to be? That's what a lot of people say about my work. But then I say to them, what is it to you? What do you see when you look at my work? And I love to encourage. Here, here's one of my missions, uh, Joseph. I want to encourage people of color. Because as I travel and exhibit my work, I don't see many of us at all. I don't see someone that looks like me. And then I want to encourage, especially uh, at the library where the exhibit's going to be, uh, with the Cuffey Library. And it's going to be in a community uh, that I believe is most, mostly African American. Yes, yes. And so I'm hoping at the opening on the 9th of September that there will be a lot of people of color, a lot of youth that I can speak to when I talk on the 9th and let them know. And I say to them, look at me. Look at me. If I can succeed and be successful as an artist, as a man of color, then you can do the same thing. But it takes a lot of hard work and determination. So you don't quit. You know, what I do is put my Lord and Savior in front of me, and he directs my path. And so when I do that, everything falls in place. So I'm just happy to be here. Wonderful. And the thing is, the Cuffey community is predominantly uh, people of color, and they'll be having our um, Black Ink Block Party there on September 24th from noon until 6. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wonderful event. There's three to 500 people normally come. Kwame Alexander will be there. Your mm -hmm. exhibition will be up. 
Um, so hopefully we'll see that 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 population really take advantage oh. of what we've made for them right there yes. in, in their backyard, you know? Oh, absolutely. Um, and you have a lot of passions talking about, you know, people of color. And one of them is the Buffalo Riders, the Buffalo Soldiers. Um, could you tell us a little bit more what that is? Absolutely. You know, I'm the founder. Uh, of course, I'm, let me start back and talk about horses. Um, I love horses. I always have loved horses, even though I'm a guy from the city. And I, I just love being around horses and learning to ride a horse. And so now as an adult, as a grown uh, man of, of, of some age, uh, of course, I have I've had several horses. I uh, still have one now. His name is Mr. Major. And I take him with me a lot of times when I'm speaking about the Buffalo Soldiers and that history. And as you know, the Buffalo Soldiers was a group of African-American horsemen that were in the Army. They were in the 9th and 10th Cavalry. Black men, formed back in 1866, and they actually served right on up until the Vietnam War. Oh, wow. Yes, they did. And now the Buffalo Riders, which is the group that I formed, it's a, it's a group of uh, African-American riders, and we keep that mission alive of the Buffalo soldiers, who they were. And there are still one or two that are still living that I know of. Of course, they weren't born back in 1866. But uh, as I said, the, the Buffalo soldiers were uh, in use all the way up until the Vietnam War. Wow. Yes. Um, and one last question for you. Um, you've taught people of all ages, um, the young to the old. Uh, what advice do you have for aspiring artists? Oh, my. That's a good question. That is an ex excellent uh, question. And uh, what my advice is to be, and when I watched the young lady that was just before me a few minutes ago, you know, I look, I look at people like that, and uh, who, it's very inspiring to me when I see people like that. So what I would like to do for young people is to put your best foot forward and do your best. You know, a lot of times we have to encourage, especially uh, people of color, we have to encourage you. There are hard knocks, there are bumps, and you will get knocked down, but you have to get up. And then I always tell them, you know, have a goal, have a desire, have a dream, and don't let anyone shake your tree. Yeah, I used to say that when I was a little bit younger. Uh, my dad used to tell me, don't let anybody shake your tree. In other words, when you have a dream and a focus to do something, do it your best, and you will be rewarded for it. So that's my uh, words that I would say to, to the youth uh, of any color. Anybody, I like to talk to anybody that's uh, have an interest in art or whatever field that you'd like to go into, I'd like to encourage you. And you're living proof that if you follow your passion, you can actually live the dream. Yes. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Ken. It's thank been a real you. pleasure. And thank you to all of you for tuning in. This has been another edition of Library Life. And until we see you again, keep creating.